Hi, this is the fellow passenger. Today we are going to look at a very old VST that is still around and still very relevant. It's the FM8. An FM synth that is really, really powerful and sometimes it goes on sale for very cheap. If you haven't got it already, keep an eye out and get it if you can, if you're interested in FM synthesis that is. There are plenty of tutorials out there. A lot of them are several hours long. They're very good. But when I want to learn a new instrument, I sort of just want to get in there and start making stuff. And that's what I'm going to focus on. So I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm going to help you get started designing your own sounds. And then you can start taking in the other stuff at your own pace when you can start enjoying this synth. If FM synthesis is something that is completely new to you, I would suggest that you check out the link that I'll put in the description to a three minute intro to just explaining what it is because that will be helpful in this tutorial. But okay, let's just get into it. Here we got the um, vanilla patch, just a sine wave, um, and we're going to jump into expert mode. Straight in there. Um, here is the matrix. That's the heart of the sound design in FM8. A lot of FM synthesizers use so-called algorithms that illustrate how the different operators are connected to one another. And there is a basic set, uh, for example, operator in Ableton has got them, the DX7 has got them. But this one is unusual in a good way. There are some other synths that do this as well. It is a matrix that allow you to route it as you like. So as you can see here, F is highlighted in white and it goes down here and it says A to here. Anything that is connected to that strip down here is a carrier. That's basically something that you will hear. So that's it. We only got one operator and it's using a sine wave at the moment. Now, if we want to start doing FM, we need to connect it to another operator. All these other ones are black at the moment. That means that they're turned off. So by right clicking, you're turning it on and then you just use the matrix too. So if we want to do a bit of FM and feed something into F here, classic FM sound. And as this is a matrix, you can also feed it the other way. So I can send F back into E to create a little bit of a feedback loop. Gets nasty very quickly. So you get the idea how you connect these ones up. Don't forget that you have to right click to turn these on. The other thing is that you can see these lighter gray boxes here that is sort of in between the different operators. That is if you want to create feedback loops so you can feed F back into itself. So you can imagine here if you want to. So you can get very gnarly sounds very, very quickly. It looks like there is huge amount of operators here, way more than the DX7, but there actually isn't. There are six regular operators and that's A to F. X is also an operator, but it's slightly different as you can see here. It's a noise source. So it's good if you want to infuse a bit of noise into your signal path. So if we just connect that as a carrier as well, now you see we've turned the volume up, but you actually have to turn the amplitude of the noise up here. And you can do some saturation. And you can obviously like feedback that back into F if you want to do a bit of FM with noise. So X is special because that is noise. Z is also special because that's a filter. So if you want to use this filter as part of your signal path, let's create a bit of FM here. So you get a bit more of a harmonic tone and then we disconnect the carrier and we connect it into the filter and we connect the filter to the output. So now we click on the filter and then so you can do your filter thing. Right, I think probably you're getting the hang of how this matrix works. This in section here is if you load the FM as 
an audio effect rather than as an instrument because then you can use your own sounds and frequency modulate them in this matrix. But we are not going to look at that in this tutorial. Next up, we are going to look at the envelopes. So if you click on these uh, different operators, you can see the little letter up here. Uh, we are just jumping, jumping between the, um, the different operators. Down here, we got uh, an envelope and it looks like a regular ADSR to start with where you can do the normal ADSR stuff. You can zoom in and zoom out, actually. However, what makes this a bit special from a lot of other synthesizers is that you can add new stages in. So if you right click anywhere here, you can, let's do a bit of FM into the F1 so we get a bit more harmonies here. Um, so if you right click, you can add new stages. The cool thing though, is between these red lines, that is the sustain stage where a lot of other synthesizers, like now there is nothing happening between here. So it's just gonna hold, hold the value that's there. But if you add a few more stages in here, it's actually looping between here. So you can create a lot more animated sounds. This is quite powerful, especially if you do some of that with FM synthesis. So if we click on E, so we get the envelope for that, which is still its basic envelope. So let's see here. Play a bit further down on the keyboard. You can create quite interesting envelope shapes. And again, I think if you right click on them, you can re equally remove them as adding them. There are also a drop down here with some envelope presets. So I think gate is is the the sort of basic one which is just on and off also you can when you're adding these nodes if you click on tempo sync they will snap to this grid so you can make some quite rhythmical envelopes if you like another thing that is important to point out here which a lot of fm synths have um it is setting a frequency to fixed rather than tracking with a keyboard, which is sometimes interesting if you want to do percussive sounds because you can have, let's say you have the carrier tracking with a keyboard, but you may want to have some of the modulators not tracking with the keyboard. So the relationship will be different depending on which key you're pressing. There is no button to set it to fixed, which like the DX7 or operator has. What you need to do is to go to ratio and turn that to zero. To, um, so if I do that with both of these, it's going to be easier to hear. Uh, and then you set the frequency here. Now you can't hear anything because the frequency is set to zero. So let's just uh, set, add some. So now it doesn't matter which key I'm pressing, it's going to produce that particular frequency. see we set that back to zero and then we set that to uh, gate we just reset it here a little bit quickly now we set that to eight uh, one I mean and that to zero then we are back to our original FM tone here we should also talk about the waveforms. There are a lot more waveforms in here than maybe any other FM synth that I've ever worked with. And it's including the TX waveforms. And they are taken from the Yamaha TX81Z, which have some really strange ones looking like that with sort of a straight line in the middle there. Um, 
And I think that is a really powerful hardware synth, which I have. And to have these waveforms in here is great. Now let's look at this little section over here. A, B, C, D here is corresponding to these, and it's exactly the same thing. So if you want to go to that, um, this um, operator E, you just can click on E, but you can equally click on it there. And you see if I click on F here, it changes F here. Ops, if you click on that, you actually see all the operators, operators at the same time. So if you need to be able to compare them, um, depending on what frequencies you're setting, for example, or what waveforms they are using. Envelopes is the same thing. You just get an overview of all the envelopes that are in use at the moment. And you can expand them by clicking on them, but it allows you to see how they look in relation to one another. The mod section is where you can, for example, map the modulation wheel on your hardware synth or the pitch bend range. And there's two LFOs down here that you can map. So let's map LFO one to our operator F. That's that section. The key section, I'm not going to go into any detail. That, to me, is more relating to a performance mode where you um, you have it on the DX7 as well. You can map, depending on where on your keyboard you're playing, where the amount of FM is going to take place and stuff, but not going into that in this video. Then there is this section. It's the spectrum and waveform. It illustrates the waveform that is actually being played. Oops. So as we're introducing FM, you will see what the final waveform will look like. You have a small version of it up here as well. But this can be quite helpful. And then we have the pitch section, not to be forgotten. That is a bit like operator and also in the DX7, operator in Ableton, I should say, and in the Yamaha DX7. It affects the pitch envelope for the whole sound rather than for individual operators. However, you can go in to an operator and say, I don't want to be, let me see, where is that? There should be a place, oh, pitch envelope. You can say whether you want an operator to be affected by the pitch envelope, but you don't have an individual pitch envelope for each operator. So let's go back into pitch. And also I want to show you a quirk, which is part of the Yamaha DX7. If you change the first stage of the pitch envelope, it also moves the last stage, which on the DX7 is both interesting and really irritating. The good thing with this envelope though is that you just get rid of that by doing that and now we have a much more of a normal envelope you can hear it's not much happening here in terms of the how the envelope is affecting it that's why we need to potentially change this how much amplitude is taking the envelope on board so we can make quite percussive sounds. Okay, we're almost there in this quick introduction. I just there's another couple of things I would like to show you. If you go into master, it's this section here where you can change the quality. And analog and digital are interesting. If you add analog, you will get a little bit of drift in the oscillator, so you will hear that's without. It's difficult to hear with that sound perhaps, but you will get a little bit of drift in the oscillators and digital will add, it, add in digital artifacts. All right, I think this is it for this introduction. I hope you found that helpful. Now you should be able to start making your own sounds, obviously going to the effects section. I think that's quite self-explanatory where you can just turn these different effects on and 
uh, get some interesting um, things, but I'm not going to go in and explain those. Now you should be able to design your own sounds, and then you can start looking at those massive um, tutorials if you want to go into further detail on any of this stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and if you can support this channel, please check out some of the links below. Also, I will be playing live soon. There will be a video about that shortly. Thank you. Bye.